Okay, are you or perhaps your spouse guilty of financial infidelity? Such a thing really exists, and in these tough times, it can be as painful as a physical affair, and we have advice on how to spot the signs and what you can do about it. Joining us is the author of Every Single Girl's Guide to Her Future Husband's Last Divorce. <laughs> Welcome, Adrian Ashley. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Now, what in the world is financial infidelity? Well, you've heard of infidelity. Well, that I've heard of. And that's usually easy to spot. Lipstick yeah. on the collar, you know, <laughs> did you or didn't you, what is the definition of is. Mm. But <laughs> when you're talking about financial infidelity, the line isn't quite so black and white. Yeah. So here you're talking about, well, I bought it. It was on sale, 75% off but really not mentioning how much it was. So not being completely straightforward and honest with your partner or your spouse about financial matters. Absolutely. Okay. Or right. you say, you said you buy something and you say you got it for free but you really didn't? Yeah, like opening up a Best Buy card, getting 12 months free, no payments, in, no interest for 12 months and you bought it but you know your spouse isn't going to like the fact that you bought it because maybe it's a toy, maybe it's not really on your needs list uh -huh. yeah, but you yeah, really yeah. wanted it. Oh, I wanted it a raffle. Oh, so how can financial so infidelity good. affect a relationship? Well, it all boils down to trust because that's really what you're talking about. Mm. And with a physical affair, you have you know, a little bit of an excuse where there's hormones and there's lust. and some, But with financial infidelity, it really is all about the lying. Mm. And what can that do to a relationship? Well, what does any lie do to a relationship? Really, we're talking about loss of intimacy, breakdown yeah. in communication. And once you stop talking, then the guilt kicks in and you're not sharing it, you're not having that conversation. That can lead to a lack of and, sex. And loss of trust. Uh, uh, trust. Trust. Loss of trust. Absolutely. So who um, cheats more financially, men or women? You'd be surprised, but it's about even. It's even. Really? It's about even. Are there so men are liars, too. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, We've been told that all our lives. <laughs> well, how many men say, you know, I, it's very easy. I just moved the decimal place over one. Right. And that's a very common thing when you're talking about stereo equipment and televisions. Oh, so they bought and it. we don't know. Oh, so well, the I, TV was really like seven ninety nine, and it was seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars oh. because it was a sixty two inch big screen. Okay. Yeah, they have misplaced comma or decimal point. Exactly. What are the telltale signs? What should you look for if you suspect that your spouse is not coming clean with you about money? Well, the thing is, you know, a lot of people might suspect that their spouse is cheating. Mm. But they might not be thinking it's financial. They might be looking for the signs of an affair or of another woman or of another man, and they're looking in the wrong place. What they should really be looking at, I mean, start with yourself. Pull your credit report. Look at those balances. Have you not seen the bills in a while? Mm -hmm. Check on your, your bank balances. Is there a new PayPal account that's been set up? A lot of online purchases you can buy right through PayPal, so it doesn't show up in your credit card is exactly what you're buying. Yeah. Yeah. So look for expenditures. What, what is your normal household budget? Are you saving as much? Because a lot of times, a lot of people save directly out of their paycheck. Mm -hmm. So they have a direct deposit going to their checking account, and then they have a direct deposit going to their savings. Yeah. Did they take that part out? If you find that your spouse is guilty of some serious financial offenses, like uh, not balancing the checkbook or gambling with bill paying money or something like that, yeah. should you confront him or her and say, what's going on? First, you have to look at the relationship, yeah. and you have to decide what your outcome is. Are you going to confront them because you want to get a divorce or do you want to preserve the relationship? Because that is really the key to determining how you should broach the subject. Yeah. Okay. And for, especially for people who want to come clean, there's... You actually have tips for yeah. people who've like confronted yeah. or maybe have come to the situation and the trust is lost. Mm -hmm. And the first step is make sure your intimacy level is good before revealing the problem. Now that's one thing that people don't think about, okay? Mm -hmm. Stress causes a whole lot of other ramifications and one way to reduce stress is have a lot of sex. It's yeah. nature's cure-all. That's what the endorphin rush is for. Right. Up that a little bit. Then when you make your confession or you have that conversation, those good feelings and that connection between you and your partner <laughs> yeah. is going to be a lot stronger right, right. and it can take a lot more. It can okay. take more. Okay. okay. Now, I know you recommend coming clean and being, just saying this is what I did, admitting it, right? Absolutely. But how do you do that? <laughs> what, are you, what are the words to start that conversation? How I would start is I would say, honey, I made a few mistakes, but I've done a lot of research and I've figured out how I'm going to fix it. Don't come to the confessional mm -hmm. without some idea of either I want to go to this professional for help, I have these three steps in mind that I want to do, have some kind of solution because the hardest thing is to be hit with, 
not only have I lied to you, not only have I gotten you in this financial predicament, and the economy's not that good anyway, right, but right. on top of that, I need you to rescue me. Mm. Yeah, so there are, there are professional options out there to help kind of relieve and reduce that debt. Absolutely. Would you say just look at those options? Google. Google it. Financial infidelity. Look for people who help you with debt resolution. Maybe you can talk to your credit card companies, lower the amount that you have to pay them, lower your interest rate. A lot of people are getting caught in this whole 12-month free financing. If you don't pay it off on day 366, you get 29.9% .9 interest retroactive for the whole wow. year. Oh, yeah. wow. And Oof. that's kind of hard because it's okay. hard to roll a Home Depot or a Best right. Buy to something else. And right. when you do your little mea culpa, you should be truly sorry, right? Truly sorry. Don't just confess because you think you're going to get caught. Don't just confess because you're worried and you can't make the bills. You know, really, you have to feel the yeah. sorry. You yeah. have to mean it because then the authentic apology is going to mean so much more. And you say create a spending plan that leaves room for each person to make personal spending choices. Absolutely. Like what, an allowance? I do think of it as an allowance. Everybody's different. And I was talking to Jean Chatsky this morning on Oprah and Friend Ra Friends Radio, and she says a lot of times opposites attract, so you're going to get a spender with a saver. Right. And that's very true, and you have to think about that when you're coming up with your financial plans. If the saver is sitting there and marking everything down and allotting you $5 a day for your spending money, that spender is not going to be happy. So really take it into consideration. Give them the free reign, anything up to 50 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever your budget threshold will allow. Okay, Adrian, it is in a nutshell time. What do you want women who are watching this show to take away from this discussion? We are in a really difficult time in our economy, and there are a lot of things that you can do to preserve your marriage, preserve your relationship, mm -hmm. and get out of the financial tangles that maybe we've all gotten into with negative amortization loans and a lot of the real estate issues. So just be truthful, be honest, and set a plan. You'll feel better about yourself and your relationship. Absolutely. I, I, I would hope. Absolutely. Awesome advice. So good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank financial you. Financial nice infidelity. Nice to see you Stay too. away from it. It's damaging. <laughs> it's damaging. We'll see you tomorrow.